Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the seventh day of the New Earth Summit, now in its third year, India's first integrative summit on solutions to our problems in health, food, farming, and environment. I'm Daryl D'Souza, founder of Earthkeepers Connect, your host for this evening. And I extend a warm welcome to our esteemed panelists and also to our audience and on behalf of our 10 Earthkeeper groups as well. We express our gratitude to you for taking out the time from your busy schedules to be with us today and to share your insights and experience so that all watching this live webinar and its recording later may benefit from the holistic science and wisdom being presented on this platform that will help us all create a beautiful world. Our topic for today is pandemic distress response and communal harmony. So I will start with uh, introducing our two distinguished guests uh, on this webinar today. Alama Sayyad Abdul Tariq. He is the president of WORK, which is World Organization of Religions and Knowledge Charitable Trust. And he's also the secretary of another three organizations, Hind Bhaichara Samiti, Human Welfare Board, and Sarva Dharma Samvad Man. He is one of the chief disciples of late Maulana Shams Naved Usmani. And he has dedicated his life for the cause of spreading peace and interfaith harmony. Every year, work organizes free medical camps and other programs for social work all over India on the birthday of Prophet Muhammad, which is marked as the Compassion Day. They also organize a number of interfaith programs and take part in festivals of other religious communities and distribute food packets in their procession. Stalls for propagation of communal harmony are erected in different cities in India and abroad as well. Work volunteers undertake compassion activities like food and clothes distribution on the birthdays of dignitaries of all religion. The organization is also involved in environmental activities like tree plantation and water conservation. And they did a tremendous job for three months for the help of food distribution in many cities of the country during the peak days of COVID-19. Halama Tariq is also the author of many books and has been writing in many journals. He is the patron of an international chain of schools, the Palm Tree Academy, that organizes different programs for students, such as personality development, press management, award distribution, and scholarship distribution program. He also teaches madrasa students about other religions so that they develop an open mind approach to other religions. Under his guidance, mass marriage programs are also organized every year to help the underprivileged. Alama Tariq, he has been awarded by several non-Muslim organizations such as Ramayanam Trust and Brahma Kumari. He has been invited to many countries for different peace conferences where he also has meetings with Prime Minister of UK, Tony Blair, and the King of Saudi Arabia, Shah Abdullah. And he is acknowledged by different groups of ulemas of the Muslim community. Our second uh, panelist, Mahacharya Saurabh Sarkar, is a social entrepreneur, a visionary educationist, a Param Sevak, and Karma Yogi. He gave shape to the Jeevan Jeevika Abhiyan that promises to transform the lives of citizens of India and Bharat alike. 
the abhiyan has influenced the informal sector workers in rajasthan vocational trainees in maharashtra and the traffic police in kolkata mahachara ji as he is fondly called has long family lineage in teaching and education with a btech from iit kharagpur and masters in arts from syracuse university new york in 2008 he reinvented his entrepreneurial career corporate lnd he created omni delta the world's first omni dimensional engaging learning platform recognized by nsdc and tata trust he is now on a mission impossible of setting up a million plant labor libraries that integrate nature and education as a means to transform lifestyles mahacharya ji lives in the karma yog ashram in Cal- kolkata along with his wife children and an extended family of co-workers so we are certainly privileged to have both of you sirs on our platform today so for the first hour of this webinar i have a couple of questions for you which will be followed by question and answers with our audience at 7 pm so audience may type in their questions in the q and a box even before that time for our audience uh, if you would like to receive the re- recorded uh, version of this webinar or you want to share it with others later please subscribe to our youtube channel the new earth summit now for my questions uh, to the panelists lama ji as you know we have all gone through a very tough uh, one and a half years due to this pandemic so what has been the experience of your organization work with the common man during this period and how has uh, worked helped uh, people across india the tragedy uh, it began uh, probably from uh, since uh, for the last 3 years and uh, is continuing uh, though we are told that the peak has uh, passed us but uh, uh, even if the peak has passed uh, the repercussions and the effects uh, they will continue to haunt the humanity the uh, distress uh, when uh, the, the tragedy was uh, uh, some people say Uh, and i have not gone into this into the detail uh, and it may well be the case that uh, it wasn't real it was a, it was a planned thing whether it was real or exaggerated or there is a conspiracy angle whatever it is uh, yes uh, wh- whatever the case the world has gone through hell uh, the elders the youth the students the children all have become victims of the circumstances so the greatest part of the tragedy is while the huge uh, humanity suffered they suffered from fear and stress the, the greatest part of the tragedy is that while the huge mass the overwhelming majority of the whole world they went through distress and they went through uh, uh, tragedies and they were devastated but there were people who took advantage of it uh, there were people who prospered uh, and uh, there were people there were people uh, who rel- sort of relished it when they uh, in in these days when uh, there was large scale hunger uh, the earning of some people got, was gone up and uh, in our country the number of billionaires grew a grew many fold in our country during this pandemic uh, so it was uh, when uh, the, as i said a great tra- tra- tragedy as as in other uh, when pandemics are, i would say the local tragic events uh, uh, it always happens that the immediate uh, Work we have at hand is to 
help the people and uh, reassure them uh, and that reassurance uh, cannot be given by literature or books or speeches online speeches so uh, that is the first job to do that we reach out to people and we reach out to people with uh, consolation and with uh, uh, the, the meetings uh, they should uh, soothe them and they should pacify them uh, and naturally they need help too uh, there were large scale hunger the people lost job the youth uh, they they were very apprehensive about job the students their classes so there is trauma and there is large scale stress so uh, like in natural calamities when we help people and when we go out our volunteers go out uh, our first job is uh, to render to them the immediate help they require uh, as uh, you said in the introduction that we uh, come out our volunteers uh, uh, they come out to help people or to do compassion activities in uh, the birth year, birth month of the prophet muhammad we do it all the year when so if only in this month we uh, display his name too uh, okay and we inspire some people and inspire some muslims to come out and involve in these activities but we do it uh, all the year round and uh, these two or three years they have been of uh, more important than prime important than uh, the need was uh, sort of immediate that we reach out to people and help them in many ways so uh, well, we we did it and our, our volunteers did it uh, that part will come later like in case of every tragedies we have been helping uh, in the areas in past in the areas where there were earthquakes in the areas where there were floods so the world will never be the same again uh, like uh, the the way it has changed now the way the relationships has changed uh, the a new form of global system of total revolution of perceptions uh, only this can recover the da damage so uh, it cannot be done immediately but then the immediate job is to reach out to people uh, to care to care for them and to cater to their needs whatever is small and in whatever way uh, with limited means we can do it so the, that immediate enormous responsibility is to reach out to people and reassure them the next phase will be that will be the next phase to regroup them regroup the people and this uh re 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 the regrouping of those organizations or those people or those well meaning groups uh, who feel that uh, the world has changed now and uh, we have to take it to take it back to the same track so th those groups should re must regroup uh, regroup uh, first and then instill confidence uh Uh, among the people in the people uh, and uh, uh, that took a, and uh, that confidence which can reassure them that we can change the world we can change the system uh, no organization can do it alone not not we and not not uh, the other organizations too but the main thing is that we can motivate the people and we can reassure them that we can change things Uh, if people want it, if uh, if uh, they, they they want it, if they they do not go into shell, if they have they have the self confidence and they have the belief that we can change the things, that is the only way this trauma can be overcome. So we've been doing things, and of uh, what sort of things? Uh, probably my uh, helper. yeah mr kirti can show you uh, some things what we have been doing in different cities 
uh, I mean, that will be a, a sample of it. It won't be all. I mean, uh, if I show you all, it 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 will go on for hours. Uh, those videos or those photos, but a glimpse of it, uh, uh, you can see what we have been doing, uh, and that is the first thing that I mean, and uh, that is our main slogan. The main slogan of main motto of organization: work for compassion, and. Uh, the world needs uh, those people who are the victims because they, they, they have gone through material loss, but the real loss is the psychological, the fear. So when we go to them and when we meet people and when we help them uh, and we do, then when we talk to them uh, and we reassure them, uh, then uh, uh, the immediate help is delivered to them, uh, but then we uh, uh, help them in another way too. Uh, the promise of the future, uh, the uh, and we tell them that that promise of the future, the good future, uh, it can only be attained through your help, through the help of the masses, through the help of all the people when they rise against uh, the exploitations. And when they rise uh, to bend the errors of, or uh, to end the exploitation. So I'll ask uh, Mr. Kirti, I mean, he's here now, and I, I'll ask him to show some glim glimpses of what we've been doing. Uh, it, uh, and again, I'll stress that uh, it, uh, we, we, will not, uh, we, we, we will not end it. What you are saying, what you are saying, some, some of those activities were uh, in this, during this month, this month of, uh, uh, we call it the Compassion Month, the month of the uh, birth of Prophet Muhammad. We do it all the year round and we'll continue doing it. People are helping, uh, helping us and uh, involving with us in this. Uh, Acharya Saurabh Sarkarji, Mahacharya Saurabh Sarkarji is here. Uh, he has joined it, uh, at least in West Bengal, he has been a very good motivator and he's been a very good help and he's been uh, he, he and uh, we thank him that he and his, along with his wife uh, he's been everywhere where our handful of volunteers he's been everywhere uh, where our volunteers in uh, west bengal uh, they were going out to people okay he was talking about the theme that is work for compassion the theme with, uh, on which we do the activities like throughout the year not only compassion month but throughout the year and like the tagline here, the book, uh, the book of Khana Kilate, Kisi Rote Ko Hasate, Ao Sat Milker, Desh Nirman, Me Hat Badate. Okay. So, like, I'll go on in Hindi now. A peace march here, Ampur Mewata, a Uske Jalake photos, a Sare photos near Kasaka, Sunneka, to ye communal harmony Kilivata, uh, Usme like both Sare, Dusra organizations be involved, Hogate, Yake, local organizations be. और कुछ इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस भी जो इंडिया इंडिया के बाहर के साउथ कोरिया के वो भी इन्वॉल्व होते और फिर आके लोकलाइट्स भी बहुत एक्साइटेड थे इस चीज को लेके कि ये बहुत अच्छा मतलब जरूरत थी इस चीज की नेक्स्ट ये दिवाली में भंडारा लगाया था वर्क चैप्टर दिल्ली मतलब दिल्ली में लगाया गया था इसमें अभी आपने न्यूज़ देखा होगा दिल्ली में पोल्यूशन की खबर आ रही है कि दिवाली जिस तरह सेलिब्रेट किया गया उससे जो uh, like atmosphere poisonous हो गया है लेकिन उन शायद उन लोगों को ये idea नहीं हुआ कि एक group ऐसा भी था जो उस time पे uh, like बेबस भी था तो वहाँ पे उन लोगों के लिए एक भंडार लगाया गया था फिर ये free food packet distribution uh, उत्तराखंड में ये इसी दिवाली के time पे वहाँ पर भी ये हमें जरूरत में सुस्वी तो उत्तराखंड की team ने जो है uh, एक food packet लगाया तो इसमें आप लो, लोगों भी देख सकते हैं � उनका लोगो हम लाइक एग्रीमेंट उनसे हुआ है तो उनका लोगो इस्तेमाल करते हैं तो उनका अप्रूवल भी इन चीजों के लिए राशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन जो है दिल्ली में लाइक इस टाइम पे एक टीम ने किया मतलब दिल्ली में कई डिस्ट्रिक्ट से तो एक डिस्ट्रिक्ट में दिवाली में जो है राशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किया कि जहां-जहां जो नीडी लोग हैं वॉचमैंस खासकर उनको हम विजिट करके राशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किए उनको दिवाली में क्योंकि हमें पता है कि जो कुछ भी अभी हालात है सबके सही नहीं है तो घर में जो दिवाली में कुछ स्पेशल स्नैक्स बनते हैं वो तो दूर की बात है खाने पीने के भी प्रॉब्लम्स है फिर ये फ्री मेडिकल कैंप बेगूसराय में इस कंपैशन मंथ में ये किया और ये मेडिकल कैंप्स जो है बहुत जगह हुआ 
सिर्फ बेगूसराय में नहीं आगे कुछ फोटोज आएंगे उसके अलावा भी और जगह से रामपुर में भी हुआ बहुत बड़े लेवल पे हुआ कम से कम दो हजार पेशेंट्स को चेक किए गए थे एक दिन में सिर्फ और ए फ्री मेडिकल कैंप संगम विहार में जो हुआ था ये उसकी फोटो है ए फ्री मेडिकल कैंप गुलबरगा में कर्नाटका में हुआ था ये उसकी फोटो है और पीस मार्च सेम जैसे पुणे में हुआ था जो हमने रामपुर में किया था वही पुणे में हुआ था महाराष्ट्र में और ये फ्री लंच डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कोलकाता में आ, इसमें आप देख सकते हैं हमारे महाचार्य जी भी है इसमें और वो बहुत हेल्पफुल रहे पूरे थ्रू आउट ये मैं कुछ एक ही एक्टिविटी डाल रहा हूँ कई एक्टिव कई एक्टिविटीज हुई जिसमें हर एक्टिविटी में शामिल थे महाचार्य जी और अपने हाथों से जो है लोगों की हेल्प कर रहे थे हमारे टीम के साथ हाँ ये फिर से अमरोहा में जो है फ्री रिक्शा सर्विस एक मैंने एक फोटो डाला है तो ऐसे कुछ लाइक रिक्शा वालों से बात करके उनको मोटिवेट करके कि एक कि कुछ दिन के लिए जो है जरूरतमंदों को फ्री रिक्शा सर्विस दे दी जाए फिर साथ में वो हर सुबह जाके टी और स्नैक्स में तो जो लेबर्स होते हैं जो सुबह सुबह लेब निकलते हैं काम के लिए तो उनके लिए मतलब जैसे एक वक्त एक टाइम की चाय मिलना भी जो है उनके लिए मतलब ऐसा होता है कि कुछ बजट में आ गया उनके लिए कुछ बच गया तो उस तरह के लोग होते थे तो उनके लिए मतलब सुबह सुबह जो टी एंड स्नैक्स कराते थे ये मुरादाबाद का है Uh, वहाँ पे वो हम लाइक मैन टीम एंड वुमेन टीम जो है वो ओल्ड एज होम विजिट किए वो गिफ्ट्स के साथ uh, अक्सर फेस्टिवल्स में लोग भूल जाते हैं कि वृद्धाश्रम में जो बुजुर्ग होते uh, उनके बारे में मतलब शायद ही किसी को ख्याल आता हुआ कि वो अपने फैमिली से दूर है उनको मतलब छोड़ दिया गया है और वो बहुत मिस कर रहे होते जब ये गए थे तो फिर इनसे मतलब जैसे गले लग के रो रहे थे कि मतलब कि हमारे बच्चे आप जैसे क्यों नहीं है इस तरह से तो इनका भी ख्याल किया गया था कि इन जाके इनको हम गिफ्ट देके गए थे विजिट किए थे और ये सिर्फ मुरादाबाद में नहीं रामपुर मतलब हमारी जहाँ जहाँ पे टीम है दिल्ली रामपुर बेंगलुरु हैदराबाद पुणे महाराष्ट्र तो हर जगह जहाँ जहाँ पे ओल्ड एज है ओल्ड एज होम है वहाँ पे विजिट किए थे क्योंकि प्रॉफिट पी आर ओ पी एच ई टी करके कंपेशन वीक नाम से उस मनाते हैं जिसमें लाइक जो ओ आता है उसमें ओल्ड एज होम एंड ऑर्फनेज होम लाइक ये ये विजिट करना होता है एक्टिविटी टास्क तो ये करते ही करते हैं उस टाइम पे और उसके अलावा भी रेगुलर विजिट करते रहते हैं वीकली क्योंकि एक इकट्ठे नहीं जा सकते हर बार तो एक एक करके विजिट करते रहते हैं ये फ्रूट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन नर्सिंग होम्स अब नर्सिंग होम्स में भी ऐसे होते हैं कि वहाँ पे फ्रूट्स की बहुत जरूरत है लाइक लेकिन वहाँ पे लोगों के पास ना अभी एक फाइनेंशियल प्रॉब्लम होने की वजह से तो कुछ ऐसे लोगों को लाइक फिल्टर करके उस जगह जाकर उनको मालूम करके वहाँ के स्टाफ से वहाँ पे फ्रूट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन किया गया था नर्सिंग होम्स में और ये रामगंगा टेंपल है मुरादाबाद में ये बहुत गंदा था तो उसको उन्होंने लाइक पूरा उस नदी को क्लीन कर दिया हमारी टीम ने ये स्वच्छ आप देख सकते हैं लाइक बड़ा बैनर भी लगाया था उन्होंने उससे पहले ताकि लोग को आके और डिस्टर्ब ना करे फिर ये बिजनौर में मेडिकल कैंप हुआ था फ्री मेडिकल कैंप था इसमें इलाज भी फ्री में कराते दवाई भी फ्री में देते हाँ ये क्लीननेस ड्राइव इन मुरादाबाद सॉरी ये मैंने गलत लिखा है ये जम्मू में हुआ है ये जम्मू का फोटो है आ, तो वहाँ पर भी हमारी टीम है तो वहाँ पे आ, एक नवोद करके एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है उनके साथ कोलैबोरेशन में मिलके ये पूरा वहाँ के जो रोड्स मतलब क्लीन करते गए थे क्योंकि वो वहाँ पे आ, बारिश होती है कुछ भी होता है ना तो सड़क पे जो है ना सारे पत्थर और मिट्टी विट्टी ये सब आ जाते हैं और रोड खराब हो जाता है तो उनने जो उसको लाइक वे आउट बना दिया था ताकि ट्रेवलर्स को आसानी हो ये फाइट अगेंस्ट अनटचेबिलिटी ये जो जातिवाद का एक ये भी मुद्दा है कि छुआछूत भी है कई कई जगह जैसे मैंने खुद एक्सपीरियंस किया था कि लाइक यहाँ पे टी शॉप में जाते हैं तो डिस्पोजल मतलब उनको डिस्पोजल्स में दिया जाता है चाहे और जैसे मैं जाऊंगा तो मुझे लगे कप में दिया जाएगा तो इस तरह के मतलब आज भी हमें देखने को मिल जाता है तो ये इसकी वजह से जो है कि ये इक्वल मतलब कि इनको इक्वेलिटी मिल जाए जस्ट बिकॉज की वो सफाई कर्मचारी है लाइक वो गटर साफ कर रहे तो इसका मतलब गंदे नहीं हुए गंदे तो हम हो गए ये अलामा साहब का भी मतलब यही कहना था और उनके जो उस्ताद थे उनका भी यही कहना था कि मतलब वो तो साफ करने वाले गंदे करने वाले हमें तो हम गंदे हो गए तो वो तो डिजर्व करते हैं मतलब ऑनर तो इस वजह से जो है उनके साथ एक प्रोग्राम किया गया कि जैसे ये हर जगह ये दिल्ली में हुआ है ये रामपुर में भी हुआ है हैदराबाद में भी हुआ है पूना में हुआ है पंजाब में हुआ है और मतलब बहुत सारे मतलब मेरे ख्याल से कम से कम बड़े बड़े जो सिटीज है इंडिया के पचास साठ तो वहाँ पे ये हुआ है तो ये इसलिए किया गया था ताकि उन uh, हमारे साथ जब उठेंगे बैठेंगे और और लोगों का इंक्लूड करेंगे तो धीरे धीरे उनके लिए लोग एक्सेप्ट लोगों में एक्सेप्टेंस बढ़ जाता है फिर वो छुआछूत खत्म होने लग जाती है जैसे यहाँ पर हो गया ऑलमोस्ट कि मतलब हम साथ में लेके बैठते हैं तो दूसरे भी साथ में लेके बैठना शुरू कर दिए तो ये भी जरूरी है कि सिर्फ बोलने से कुछ नहीं हुआ कि जातिवाद नहीं होना चाहिए 
उसे ट्रीट भी करना जरूरी है फिर ये जयपुर में लाइक प्रोग्राम किया था हमारी टीम ने मैं हर जगह की फोटो नहीं डाल रहा हूँ ये बिजनौर का ये प्रोग्राम हुआ था अपने हाथों से मतलब एक ही प्लेट में खा रहे तो इसमें भी कुछ किस कहीं कहीं पे प्रॉब्लम होती है कि भाई साथ में नहीं खाते यहाँ तो एक दूसरे को खिला रहे आप देख सकते हैं फिर ये हेल्थ केयर किट्स जो है न्यू बॉर्न बेबीज को लाइक जयपुर में जहाँ पे लाइक ऐसे हमें लाइक कुछ परिवार मिले कि हॉस्पिटल्स में जिनको लाइक न्यू बॉर्न बेबीज है लेकिन उनके लिए लाइक वो हेल्थ की सुविधा नहीं थी उनके पास तो उनके लिए हेल्थ केयर किट्स अरेंज करके प्रोवाइड किया गया फिर प्लांटेशन ड्राइव इन पटना है प्लांटेशन ड्राइव तो बहुत जगह हुआ है मेरे ख्याल से आई कॉन्ट काउंट मतलब अगर सेवन हंड्रेड डिस्ट्रिक्ट है हमारे इंडिया में तो उसमें से दो सौ डिस्ट्रिक्ट में तो हुआ ही है मतलब इतना मैं फोटो सारे कलेक्ट भी नहीं कर पाया अभी तक तो प्लांटेशन ड्राइव के तो ये गो ग्रीन का मतलब एक तरह से जो पॉल्यूशन हो रहा है और जो पेड़ काटे जा रहे जगह जगह तो उसके लिए हम ये जागरूकता की हम ये लगाना है और एक मतलब हदीस भी थी कि अगर ऐसा कि क्यामत आएगा तो ये जो बैनर लेके जा रहे थे तो उसमें था कि अगर कोई क्यामत भी आ जाएगी और आपके पास एक पेड़ है तो वो पेड़ लगाओ तो इस तरह का वो बैनर था तो बहुत ही मतलब वो इंस्पायरिंग था इस चीज के लिए कि मतलब इतनी इंपॉर्टेंस है इसकी पेड़ लगाने की फिर द्वारका में मेडिकल कैंप था वहां पर भी फ्री में इलाज और फ्री में दवाई दी गई थी फिर ये ओखला का प्लांटेशन ड्राइव फिर हमने लाइक कुछ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन के लोगों को भी इंक्लूड किया था कि उनको देखकर और दूसरे जो मोटिवेट हो जाते हैं करने के लिए फिर ये पीस मार्च मुरादाबाद का है फोटो है तो जैसे आप देख सकते हैं कि ब्रीद विद अवेयरनेस और इस तरह का है पीस इज माई वेपन इस तरह के बैनर कार्ड्स लेके जो है यहाँ पे कोलकाता में हुआ था ये पीस मार्च तो वो भी वहाँ पे भी इसी तरह के बैनर थे पीस मैसेज था एक कमल हारमोनी के लिए था बेसिकली सब कुछ और ये ऑर्फनेज होम जो है हमारे वर्क के जो एक और विंग है वर्क किड्स तो बच्चे जो है गए थे उनके साथ अपने लाइक मदर्स के साथ वुमन विंग के साथ और जाके लाइक वहाँ पे ऑर्फनेज होम के बच्चों के साथ पूरा पूरा दिन उनने टाइम स्पेंड किया एक दिन नहीं लगातार कई दिन उनने टाइम स्पेंड किया है अलग अलग जगह पे और फिर उनके लिए गिफ्ट भी लेकर गए थे और खैर जो विजिट किए थे अगर वो होते तो बताते कि क्या किससे है मतलब कि कैसे है मतलब वो बच्चे खुश हुए थे और फिर उनको जो वहाँ पे स्टाफ था उन्होंने क्या क्या बातें बताई वो बहुत वैल्यूएबल थी कि मतलब सिर्फ गिफ्ट नहीं आप आकर कुछ सिखाए भी उनने ये भी रिक्वेस्ट की थी कि मतलब आप आइए उनके साथ टाइम स्पेंड करिए ये बहुत मिस करते हैं हेल्पिंग द सिक कैंपेन ये बहुत अच्छा कैंपेन था बेगूसराय का कि ये जगह जगह हॉस्पिटल जा जाके मतलब जो सिख लोग लाइक बीमार थे और ये मालूम करते थे कि उनकी हेल्प की जरूरत है किस किस को कि किस चीज की जरूरत है तो उनकी हेल्प करते थे तो एक तरह से कैंपेन उनने चलाया था और अलग अलग हॉस्पिटल जाके विजिट करके हेल्प कर रहे थे फिर ये ऑनरिंग द ग्राउंड क्लीनर्स फिर वही वो सफाई कर्मचारियों को लेके प्रोग्राम किए थे अब फोटो देख सकते कितने भावुक हो गए थे और उनको होता है ये चीज़ कि मतलब उनके अंदर जब ये रहती है और फिर वो क्लियर किया जाता है कि हम ऐसे नहीं है हम इक्वलिटी चाहते हैं लेकिन इंसान को इंसान की तरह देखा जाए फिर ये भी वही प्रोग्राम है एलिमिनेटिंग द इविल ऑफ फैसम फ्रॉम सोसाइटी ये लखनऊ में हुआ था कि ऊपर वाला तेलंगाना में हुआ है ये पीस मार्च पटना में हुआ है सेम लाइक सेम मैसेज को लेकर फिर ये फ्री मेडिकल कैंप पुणे में हुआ है ये फ्री अमरला डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लाइक ऑल ऑफ सडन लाइक बारिश हुई थी तो फिर हमारे जो देहरादून की टीम थी उनको ये रियलाइज हुआ कि लाइक कुछ लोग ऐसे थे कि मतलब उनको लाइक बुजुर्ग थे उनको जाके हमें अमरला देने की जरूरत है और वो भीग रहे तो अमरला डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन किए थे कमल हारमोनी का मैसेज दिए थे साथ में सिर्फ ऐसा नहीं कि कुछ गिफ्ट करके आ रहे देकर आ रहे साथ में एक अच्छा मैसेज भी देकर आ रहे थे फिर फ्री मेडिकल कैंप लखनऊ का वहाँ पर भी फ्री में लखनऊ में लगातार कई दिन हुआ मुरादाबाद में भी लगातार कई दिन हुआ मेरे ख्याल से सात दिन मेडिकल कैंप चला है लगातार मुरादाबाद में और ये सीविंग मशीन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ये वुमन विंग जो है डिपार्टमेंट है वर्क की तो उन्होंने लाइक जो औरतें जिनको लाइक लाइक स्किल्स है उनके पास लेकिन रिसोर्सेस नहीं है कि वो बाय कर सके और कुछ लाइक आता है सिलाई करना लेकिन वो उनके पास मशीन नहीं है तो उसके लिए उन्होंने सीविंग मशीन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन का लाइक प्रोग्राम रखे फिर उनको इन्वाइट करके ऑनर के साथ ऑनर के साथ जो है उनको मशीन गिफ्ट किए फिर ये फ्री स्वेटर सूट पैडल रिक्शा भी ठंडी आ रही है तो ठंड में जो है वो ऐसे ही घूम रहे होते हैं आप देख रहे हैं कि देख सकते हैं कि ऐसे ही मतलब कि उनके पास इतना कुछ है नहीं पहनने के लिए ठंड में और यहाँ पे बहुत ज्यादा ठंड थी कुछ दिनों पहले और अभी थोड़ी सी कम हो गई लेकिन अभी बढ़ेगा तो फिर फ्री स्वेटर्स जो है हर जो पैडल रिक्शा वाले ना क्योंकि उनको आजकल कस्टमर मिलते नहीं है बैटरी वाले रिक्शा चल रही है और दूसरी चीजें आगे जल्दी पहुंचना है तो इनके बहुत प्रॉब्लम्स होती है तो इस तरह से इनको लाइक कैच कर करके इनको
फिर और भी बहुत सारे एक्टिविटीज है अगर आप परमिशन देंगे तो एक फाइव मिनट्स का मैं वीडियो प्ले कर दूंगा जो हमने लाइक लॉकडाउन क्योंकि बात तो उसी की आ रही थी पेंडेमिक की तो पेंडेमिक के टाइम की भी एक वीडियो है जो शुर, शुर, प्लेस, प्लेस. स्क्रीन दिख रहा है वीडियो भी आ रहा है
थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग और ये जो राशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन होता है उसके फोटोज मैंने ऐड नहीं किए जो जिनको दिए जाते हैं ये थ्रू आउट दर होता है और हम के फोटोज क्लिक भी नहीं करते लाइक फॉर अ रीजन ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच कीर्ति जी दैट्स ट्रमेंडस अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क एंड ऑल अक्रॉस यू नो सो मेनी स्टेट्स इन इंडिया एंड आई डेफिनेटली वांट टू आस्क लामा जी बट आई विल लिटिल लेटर अबाउट यू नो हाउ यू आर मोटिवेटिंग योर एंटायर टीम एंड हाउ पीपल कैन आई एम श्योर पीपल इन दिस ऑडियंस वुड रियली वांट टू कनेक्ट विद वर्क टू यू नो बी इन्वॉल्व इन सच वंडरफुल वर्क but before i ask that i will come to uh, maacharya ji uh, what is your reading of this uh, pandemic disaster that we are going through and how have your wonderful initiatives uh, been uh, supporting people at this time well when we did, uh, when this was first announced last year on 22nd of uh, i mean the lockdown first started for the first few days and precisely exactly i would say for the first 12 days um we were a little taken aback because we had never seen anything like this happen anywhere at least not in my lifetime so i i didn't exactly know like everyone else i didn't know exactly what would be the best way to respond to something like this so the first 12 days i remember i had completely almost as someone would go to a cave and completely be uh, fully focused on trying to understand what is going on is exactly what i did not by going into the cave but really trying to understand doing all the research needed but i act absolutely because it was lockdown and uh, you could not really do anything at all so all the time was spent in trying to understand a either by doing research on the internet looking at whatever information was available on media or by trying to talk to people at your personal level and trying to understand what was going on exactly at the end of 12 days within the first 12 days i kind of reached one specific conclusion and which was that whatever information we were being fed is not something that i could rely on this was my personal realization that the information being fed by the media was not something that one could rely on so i took a and a that was one and the second thing was that it wasn't really as ominous to each and every one in society as it was being portrayed so i kind of decided that i would want to try and understand whatever was the reality on the ground reality personally so satya ko khud पहचानना है खुद समझना है इस तरह का एक मनसा लेकर आई एक्चुअली एट द एंड ऑफ द ट्वेल्थ डे ऑनवर्ड्स आई वेंट आउट एंड व्हेन आई वेंट आउट आई रियलाइज दैट इट वाज एक्चुअली इफ वन वांटेड टू गो आउट देयर वाज नो लॉकडाउन यू नो फॉर समवन इंडिविजुअली पर्सनली फॉर वन पर्सन देयर वाज नो लॉकडाउन यू कुड एक्चुअली गो एनीवेयर डू एनीथिंग दैट यू वांटेड एंड आई कंप्लीटली during that period went to every corner including you know there was a time period when there was lot of halla gulla being done about um, you know certain muslim um, function which had happened in delhi and which was being portrayed as uh, you know something that had spread this and then for a, for a certain period of period of time muslims were being targeted in a certain way right and i remember having you know i would go go out into the muslim villages which was primarily muslim populated villages spend time with the people i knew there if i didn't know anyone i would just walk in and try and understand what was going on and truly what i understood is that there was a vast difference between whatever was, was being fed by the media or whatever perception we all had and whatever was the ground reality the ground reality was and whatever be the reason maybe the reason was because of whatever precautions had been taken or and all that but fundamentally i came to the conclusion that the real pandemic was fear and not the virus now i know that there have been occasions in the past in this in this planet where certain kind of uh, pandemics and infections have wiped out civilizations have done done phenomenal harm but this one particularly didn't seem i mean the bigger harm was the response to the pandemic now when i say response to the pandemic of course the lockdown we all talk about 
how it was a kind of response which uh, has caused probably more more harm than anything that that the pand pandemic could have done but who knows you know who who can tell what if the lockdown had not been imposed what would have happened etc these are you know things which are hypothetical to discuss so i won't get into that but what was absolutely real is that the response to the pandemic has caused more harm than the pandemic itself that there is no disagreeing with that all the facts are clear what are the responses to the pandemic that i'm talking about lockdown is the one which is obvious and anyone can see and anyone can kind of either criticize or be in favor of it etc so i'm not going too deep into that but let's look at some of the other important responses to the pandemic the first and foremost response is that of fear and that's a universal response almost near universal response that came out even in the in the work that people would do in trying to come out and trying to help others the fundamental thing was it was shrouded with fear and that is a response which we need to really work on coming out of all kind of you know bhed bhav everything uh, we need to dissolve and fundamentally tackle this one thing which is fear and we must remember when we do that we must remember that first of all let's take the example when we were colonized by the british it's not that the british came and killed every indian it was not that they came and every day there was a genocide and the whole population was wiped out it was not that they came with the guns of course and they killed how many people just a few people but that was enough to instill fear amongst everyone else so that we for 200 years we kind of talked out the line and we became what we call dependent because seemingly we became independent once we were on, on 15th of august 1947 seemingly i say because again there are so many different views about what independence means but if we see why did we become become colonized fundamentally because of fear it wasn't that they were killing one and all so we need to remember that that this is another form of colonization which is happening no matter what what is going on in which the fear has colonized us and when fear colonizes us the next step next things that follow is something that we have just you know recently experienced because 70 years is not that far back in history we know it what it is to be colonized and once again i want to want to remind people that when india became independent in 1947 the population was a good around 36 crores at that point of time now out of 36 crores if i i mean i have actually done this survey with people you go out and ask people to name a few freedom fighters and you do this not with people who have not read history or who are illiterate and all that go ahead and today tomorrow just do this experiment ask people to name 20 freedom fighters people who have who made a difference during the entire freedom struggle you will see after naming five or six or 10 they will be trying to remember or mm, or uh, uh, okay and then they will if you are very lucky even even the most learned people will come up with the name of 20 a list of 20 quickly at one so what does that prove that proves that there were very few people who were really doing anything at all which would count as something that helped us gain freedom out of 33 crores 33 36 crore indians who were there at that point of time you would be able to count today we remember maybe 20 30 50 10 the best case scenario you would probably be able to conjure up name of 3 lakh people that still makes 35 crore 97 lakhs of indians who just went with the flow when gandhi ji was being hit on the head with lathi it was not only white skinned people coming from england who were hitting it was our own people who were doing this so we know what happens when we get colonized and that's exactly something that i think that is that has happened because of the pandemic which we are not understand that fear has colonized us what is this fear this is a fear of dying first of all now as the, that fear of death is the fear which is the fundamental fear which is used in no matter what one tries to do 
when one wants to really coerce anyone into anything, the, the real uh, fear that is used is the fear of death. And what better, um, what, a, what, a, what more could there have been than this? So that is the first response, the response coming out of fear. What's there if we die? I mean, one day or the other, we will all die, sooner or later. So first of all, we have to get out of this fear. And I'll, I'll come to the communal bit in a, in a moment because I think that's part of the whole discussion. The only way to address fear, if we can come out of, if we really understand the, the communal aspect of this also, but a little later on that. Then what are the other responses to this pandemic that has happened? Uh, we saw, you know, and I'm not referring to the pictures that we saw. Obviously, there were people who would do this for a, for a, uh, as part of life and work is an organization exactly in that that uh, spirit which works in that spirit i've personally seen that but as soon as the pandemic happened all it suddenly was an opportunity for a lot of people to come out and you know do, uh, distribute ration and and seemingly be helpful now i have seen during that occasion if you wanted to help if you wanted to help, you could not be allowed to help in many cases because if, if, if people wanted to, people in power, a certain kind of power, wanted to take that opportunity to show that they were next to people trying to. Now, those were people who we saw who came in and distributed ration for two days, three days, then again, we never saw them. So, uh, you know, immediately uh, about within two months from the lockdown, when in the lockdown happened in month of March, and in month of May, we had here in Bengal, the, the massive storm called Amphan, and which really devastated our ashram also, and devastated a lot of Bengal. Um, what I would tell people within the ashram then, was that, you know, this was two months later, Within these two months also, we had seen a lot of people with fanfare coming and distributing ration, doing this help, that help during the, when the pandemic started. All of them, because of the length of the pandemic, had kind of vanished. And then, of course, there were the government doles that were being given out. Now, we had started in 2008, when I first started the ashram, the first thing that we had started was a system of a langar. So we have been running the Langar from 2008. So one day during the pandemic, when all this was happening, that was the first day actually, we sat down and calculated when people were hear, hearing news that, uh, you know, so many uh, rations have been distributed, so many plates have been distributed, we calculated in these, in the 13 years from 2008 to 2020, 12 years, we had actually served more than two, about 2.5 lakh plates. Now that was maybe 100 plates one day, 50 plates another day. But the thing was that that was not even on the day of the Amphan that stopped. Not for a single day that has stopped. From the day that we have started, it's like that Akhand Diya that one says, the, the, we had, it was like a sanskar. So what I want to say is that uh, this these acts of compassion, like what work is doing and it they demonstrated these need to become sanskar sanskar as in just a way of life and sanskars which means you cannot move away from that so although i was being uh, you know, cited as as uh, being acknowledged for for giving uh, for showing gratitude and thanks for you know our association with work during this uh, compassion month whatever association that we could do but for for us I know my feeling is that it's that work of compassion or that work of seva is the highest form of luxury. You now you can go from I, I keep saying this you can go from a scooter to a motorcycle to an Alto to an Audi you know to an Innova to an Audi to uh, a Ferrari. Then what? Then comes seva. Then comes compassion. Just experience. I mean, I, I people who have experienced that just cannot get out of it. I mean, that's why Bill Gates and, and everyone who kind of gets everything, then they go on to philanthropy. Now, whatever again would, would be the, whether that's a philanthropy for this cause or that cause or to make a brand or name and all that, I don't want to really get into those issues. But philanthropy or seva or service or compassion, this is the highest form of luxury. We just need to create a culture and educate people to experience that luxury. 
So I don't feel, I, I, I would always feel that I was given the privilege to, just like if someone says, come ride my Ferrari, I was given the privilege to, to become part of some of these activities that work, wonderful activities that work was doing here in, in Kolkata. So there's really no, I, I don't expect and feel kind of strange that I'm being uh, thanked for this because it was really a privilege to this. And I, I feel that that's the kind of feeling that everyone should have and that's the feeling that we should propagate. The last and other response that has happened to the pandemic, and this is very important, which Alama Saab was mentioning, is that the, there is factual evidence on this, that, and this is the government's statistics, is that if you take the all the people in India who, whose net worth is more than 100 crores, their net worth during these 16, 18 months, the past 18 months, has grown by 30%. Never before in the history of, of the economy of the country has this happened. Worldwide, if you take Similarly, the top, you know, the, the uh, uh, top millionaires, the, the thousand top, the uh, hundred thousand top people, if you take them, if you see the statistics, their net worth during this period has gone up somewhere by 15%, somewhere by 16%. India, actually, it has gone up 30%. Both these figures, worldwide 16%, and India 30%, is astonishing. So the one thing that I can take away from this is obviously, why will the pandemic go away? Because the, the man out on the street, the guys who we were feeding, they are not the decision makers in this country, nor are the two or three or five politicians who are the decision makers. I mean, the prime minister did not make this decision on his own. I mean, a few days before this, he had no clue that he would actually impose the lockdown before he actually announced it. So the decision makers, if you look at, these decision makers have, most of them, have all benefited materially from this pandemic. This is a repercussion or a, a, a result of the pandemic. We need to understand this reality and then be prepared for the, the repercussions that are happening, that are going to happen because of it. So, so um, you know, these are just a few. There are so many other things that we can talk about, but I think uh, for the for the paucity of time, and, and I will kind of uh, cap it there. And uh, I think we are approaching the time for questions. Or if you have anything to kind of add or comment on this, I would like to hear. But that's really the response to the pandemic, which we should all be aware of. Thank you. And you know, since you have to leave, I will ask you the uh, second uh, question also. And later I will pose it to Lama Ji. Uh, so, you know, what is uh, your advice uh, now for people, uh, you know, how to take things forward, uh, resolve in their own way? Of course, this is a, you know, big global event. And uh, the global forces are bringing it out, uh, you know, for and against. But what can the common man do uh, now, and uh, you know, to make things better uh, for each other? And is there any way through your initiatives that uh, people can get involved to, you know, make a better future? So first and foremost, uh, let us not uh, not also downplay or or. Um, reduce the pandemic to say that, well, it was nothing in terms of the actual virus. Let's just take it for granted that there was a real virus and a real problem also, because a lot of people have died, etc. and all that has happened. Now, I will just change gears from what I was saying earlier and, and mention that if for a moment we assume that there was a real virus, we have to understand that this was a virus which was affecting the respiratory system, right? It was not a problem of any other system. There are 10 systems in our body. It was not affecting the bones. It was not affecting the brains. It was not affecting our gastroenterological system. It was not affecting any of the other system. It was fundamentally affecting the respiratory system. Now, I will refer to school level uh, uh, knowledge about, about our body. We all have been taught, if you have even studied eighth grade, uh, biology in class, we have been taught about the anatomy is that the respiratory system has two parts. 
there is the upper respiratory system and the lower respiratory system. The upper respiratory system is made up of this nose and all the way it goes, the rhin we know tonsil, hota hai, rhinitis, hota hai, all this. And then it goes, we know the bronchus, the trachea and all that. Then it goes into the lungs. From the bron bronchus onwards, goes into the lungs. Again, I am not trying even to speak like a doctor. But this is, I am trying to speak like a eighth class biology student. And not a good student, someone who has little bit studied anatomy would speak like this. I may know better, but I am actually speaking exactly like that. So just to make the point that this is what I'm saying should be obvious to anyone. Now, upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract. I have one simple question. Have we, how many of us have heard people dying from infection to of the upper respiratory tract? Upper respiratory tract mein infection hamesha hoti hai. Sardi, khasi, etc. All that are all infections that happen to the upper respiratory tract. Whether bacterial infection, viral infection, whatever. This happens all the time to everyone and people don't die of it. The only death that we have seen even earlier to, you know, respiratory tract infection happens when the infection travels deep inside into the lungs. So we know people die of tuberculosis, pneumonia, etc., which are all infections of the lower respiratory tract. Now that tells us something which is very obvious. That is the function of the upper respiratory tract is to prevent infections which are coming all the time from outside to go into the lower respiratory tract. Because once the infection goes into the lower respiratory tract, then it is dangerous. So the design and and upar wale ne Allah mia ab jinko bhi mante hain, unhone jinhone ye design kiya hai unki khubi dekhi. He has designed it in a manner so that the upper respiratory tract takes care of it. It it actually ensures that the infection should not go down. Now, how does it do that? It has its own mechanism, but do we? What is the hygiene that we follow of the upper respiratory tract? We brush our teeth. Why? Because Colgate has told us, and uh, this and that company has told us, the oral hygiene is very important. So we have uh, we have these things, toothpaste and toothbrush and all that available, which religiously we have been taught how to do this, which is taking care of oral hygiene. Now, isn't it absolutely oral hygiene is you're taking doing that because you're eating food through this. So when you're eating food, stuff along with the food is going and remaining here, which can cause infection. So you're cleaning it with basic hygiene. Now, wouldn't you assume that there is a basic hygiene for the respiratory tract also? What do we do about it? Absolutely nothing. But if you look at, just look at the Naga Sadhus, Naga Sadhus I'm referring to, who don't wear anything, but you will see they're carrying one commander. No, I will show it to you looks something like this carrying a commandal you will see them carry even one who has not wearing anything no clothes this is as important you look at yogis they will have this now what is this this is the toothbrush of the upper respiratory system means this is actually a contraption that is used for con for maintaining hygiene of the upper respiratory tract it is not difficult to use it's easier to use than as easy to use as brushing your teeth but neither are these available now personally i had been i no one when i was growing up no one taught me this but when i kind of decided to explore our traditional ways to in order to overcome the standard health problems that we all face i came across this about 15 17 years back and have been using this for maintaining hygiene of my upper respiratory tract for the last 15 years and ever since i've been doing that it has miraculously cured me completely healed all the problems that i used to have about sardi khasi this that standard which at some point of time had become chronic also so my point is that this kind of thing is obvious now if we could impose lockdown if we could impose all of these things, why if we could impose people wearing this mask and stuffing themselves from, you know, uh, again, I mean, I'm, I, I used to have a mask in my bag for the last 10, 15 years, because I've grown up in a place called Dhanbad, which is a coal mining area where a lot of 
percentage of people dying of pneumonia, etc., was very high. So I kind of, because I'm health conscious, so I used to keep a mask. So I'm not anti-mask. Please understand that. But there was no education at all on how a mask, how and when a mask should be used, and no education about something like this. Now, if there has been a pandemic of the upper respiratory tract, and in our country, which has this rich heritage of this kind of thing, which is, you know, this is used to do neti. There are different kinds of neti, which is clean, cleaning of the respiratory tract. This is jal, you do this, you, you do jal neti with this. There is other sutra neti, etc. Jal neti should be done every day. And, and be, because I was doing, I mean, I have been doing all this. So I was very confident, very clearly. So I've been kind of absolutely going out anywhere and everywhere like any COVID warrior. So, and I, if you, since you're asking me what it should be done, the first and foremost thing that should be done is that there should be a phenomenal revolution. All of us should jump in, in a campaign to teach people to become aware, to wake up to the issue of immunity. Because the only thing that can help us in this juncture is our immune system. With 80% of the people were asymptomatic means their immune, immune system was dealing with it. And yet you lock down those 80% also. So instead of locking down those 80%, we should have used those 80% and everyone else, you know, whoever, to create a campaign, a revolution, uh, as big as anything that we have ever seen, to completely change the way by, uh, in which people look at their immune system. So the, the one and foremost response to the pandemic, to, I mean, I would say is this. Um, if you ask what we have been doing, we've been, I mean, we are trying to do that at a very, very personal level because I, I have realized that in order to do a big campaign, to create big impact, you need a lot of money and it, it needs, it only has to happen at, at a certain point of time when you can mobilize resources. So we've been doing that at a personal level, as you can see. Uh, all this, these are kind of lined up here. So during the pandemic, I went and got hundreds of these done. Whoever I've been able to, I've kind of uh, tried to tell them, come out of fear, do these kind of things, which are more important. But most of what we have done uh, has been more at a spread the word level, at, at a personal level, so that word of mouth could work. And uh, as of now, uh, the I mean, I'm waiting because... I'm trying to answer your question as an organization, what we have been doing. I am waiting for the right time and opportunity to strike. Because I don't think if we do a little bit here, a little bit there, I, I mean, I, I have complete uh, respect for all those efforts. Every drop, I mean, every drop comes together to make an ocean. Uh, but then there is also another approach that I'm waiting for, to, which is to do some, to strike it big. Because just like we saw when the prime minister announces lockdown and that within two weeks everyone in india is worried wearing a mask in a place where it is so difficult to make people wear helmets and 150,000 people die of road accidents every year and still people don't wear helmets don't people people don't follow traffic rules and within one week everyone wore the mask so it is possible to bring change uh, we are waiting for for some opportunity to like that to happen where we want to introduce things about uh, bolstering the immune system. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Mahacharya ji. And uh, yes, I uh, very clearly take the first point, which I'm sure you and you know your organization was doing, which is talking about the uh, fear and helping people understand, you know, that uh, how to come out of that in the first place. And uh, this second point, it just crossed my mind just now that you know uh, that one if it was one point to strike or at least one person who could have been influenced you see uh, i just thought of it right now our prime minister modi everybody knows he's a yogi so at that time instead of banging the thalis if he had uh, done a demonstration of jalneti to everybody in the country and think, thinking you know so many cases would have been saved so uh, i think he's the person that you need to <laughs> approach you know, with this, and it's not too late also. I, I, I wonder if anybody else had that idea, but uh, not too late. I think we should uh, still please uh, make that effort to, 
So, so only, only, only thing I would add there is that uh, we take an approach of not saying instead of this. Guy. Now, so ban the thali was a completely different purpose. That purpose would not be served by jalni, but jalni's purpose wouldn't be served by banging the thali. So the whole approach is okay. If, uh, I mean, banging the thali would have caused something. I don't know exactly what, but something. Um, but yeah, I, I I would not say instead of this that, okay. but this and that, and twenty other things. I mean, everyone has a role to play. Right. So right. And I remember that was my first response in May of 2020. You know, where uh, we were not even allowed to use the word. You know, uh, uh, cure or uh, doing something to prevent COVID and all. So I, uh, because I come from a background, you know, 16 years of integrative natural medicine, mainly working to reverse chronic illnesses and uh, all of that is related to immunity. So I did a webinar, a friend of yoga teacher, a friend of mine from Lebanon, she was also, you know, very much connected and we hosted a webinar and uh, we had over 100 people that time, you know, I had not expected uh, because our account was only up to 100 people and I could see it was going to 103, 104 and it was dropping all the time. So then we realized uh, at least 150 con uh, people, you know, from uh, four or five countries were trying to join us. And the way I did a webinar for two hours and uh, it's still there on my YouTube channel. I repeated that in a slightly different format in uh, uh, July. And uh, the two hour webinar were all my, you know, natural uh, techniques that people can do at home to increase their immunity. And uh, the words I had to use were, you know, without mentioning COVID, I had to use the words, uh, high immunity is the only thing that will save us now. So, so I guess people, uh, you know, understood what I was talking about. Uh, you know, so that was kind of my uh, COVID response at that time. And I'm sure all the you know natural medicine practitioners across the globe also as they were trying to do their their bits in it so thank you for that uh, advice and uh, i will uh, now come to lama ji uh, uh, about um, lama ji can you please share with us uh, you know uh, how would you like to people to connect with work and what do you think now are the next steps is it uh, uh, something new or do we uh, it's still social aid with food and with health programs or is there some new strategy uh, right now like uh, you were mentioning that uh, uh, you know about the reality of this pandemic and uh, uh, i have also been very clear you know of course uh, i've just uh, recently circulated uh, uh, a post where at least about 35 to 40 of the eminent scientists in this world uh, who uh, through their videos and their scientific proof they were sharing that you know the virus has still not been isolated till today but they were also sharing many other aspects like the 5g radiation and toxicity due to many other reasons in the world now are causing these COVID symptoms. And I, my research also showed me since the last year that this is the case. And uh, we find only few people, few uh, scientists who are very clearly connected to medical institutions and these corporations, you know, and these vaccine uh, whole companies like a business entity. Very few of them are claiming that, you know, this virus exists. So, so for me, that's very important when independent scientists from their own research who are not connected to the vaccine lobby, who are not con uh, connected to big corporates and to World Health Organization and CDC, when they are saying, you know, that this doesn't exist. And my own uh, kind of uh, research also shows that it's not this uh, uh, thing that they've isolated that is causing illnesses, but it's more of the... Uh, you know, this entire 5G and other toxicities that have been introduced to us, whether it's through the chemtrails or it's through the GMO food. Uh, humanity is at a time where our immunity is really taking a hit from so many other, you know, uh, sources. So, uh, Lamaji, would you uh, say that um, uh, it is time also to uh, do a health revolution movement, you see, uh, to help... Uh, people uh, with their health and their immunity. So has work also been thinking about that and 
uh, doing some health camps where people, of course, uh, one part of the health camp is giving the medical supplies and all of that. But any of the work is it involved with educating people on better hygiene, like how uh, uh, the Kaji bus thing, uh, or any kind of health programs, and anything else that you want to share with us? The next steps forward for work during this time. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, now that you have mentioned, I'd asked you earlier too, and now that you have mentioned that, uh, I didn't know it. Uh, that uh, the virus, uh, the, this virus has, is, is still not been, uh, what you said, uh, separated? Isolated. Or, isolated. isolated. See, I, I will share one more detail than yeah, that. And the, vaccines are, and the vaccines are there. Yeah, so I will share two the points in that. Uh, this word isolated, right? They are finding something that has got a shape, okay, uh, which is actually uh, what we call exosomes, which are a natural... Uh, uh, byproduct of any healing process. You get radiation, You like you get a hurt on your foot. What happens uh, if you hit a stone, blood comes out, blood plasma comes out with a dry air, a scab is formed. And once that uh, injury is healed, that falls on the floor. And you can say, hey, there is some uh, protein over there from your body fallen on the floor, right? So you can take a photograph of it. But uh, no matter how many hours of video you do on that scab, you will not see it moving around. You will not see it going here or there infecting anybody. So they have come to this point where they found some substance and they're saying, oh, we've isolated it. But till today, they have not shown that that thing moves or it enters the body or it you know, infects the body or it creates the symptom. So these are what all those uh, 35, 40 scientists are saying across the globe that uh, the isolation methods itself are not correct where they take a fragment of the virus. And then secondly, they have never ever proved that uh, this thing uh, is mobile, is going into the human body, multiplies in the human body, or causes the symptom. Or once we have symptoms, it passes on to others. They have never proved it. So people are logically looking at the other uh, reasons of body toxicity and what I call COVID symptoms. And they seem to be coming from other sources as well. So um, commenting on your earlier point that many people have, become, certain people have become rich uh, and yes, I see that as a natural outcome. People who are in the business of, uh, you know, coming to aid, giving oxygen cylinders, preparing masks, you know, beefing up the beds in the hospital. Yes, all of those people, uh, you know, have uh, have become, uh, you know, their net worth has doubled, tripled or become 10 times more. That's a natural thing. And we can only wonder whether it was pre-planned for them. But yes, this was a natural thing. So yes, Lama Ji. It has been very fruitful uh, to listen to you too, uh, and uh, it is obvious and uh, naturally. Uh, I promise that uh, the medical camps thing and the medicines things, uh, I'll change uh, uh, the approach of our organization and go to the basic things. I mean, to teach to the people the basic things and help them with the, uh, the commandal uh, which Macharya said uh, you yeah, suggested this was, uh, such a uh, simple thing uh, no, and in uh, India also I'll just give you another reference the you know champion of uh, uh, having treated more than 60 70 thousand people uh, from COVID positive or symptoms to you know uh, complete negative goes to you know the, the trophy goes to Dr. Biswaru Prai Chaudhary in India and uh, you know over 70,000 people I mean 60,000 were the number that I heard like four months back I'm sure that would have crossed one lakh you know uh, uh, so without a single death so we are seeing that there are alternative treatments in India and perhaps we need to you know take those through an organization like yours which has got such great reach and kind of you know share it with the public uh, I'll surely share it with the public surely take your reference uh, but then uh, uh, as far as our members, our workers are concerned, uh, we have been working uh, uh, amongst them, amongst the crowds, uh, indiscriminately. Uh, we didn't uh, the, distribute the ration or medicine or anything else uh, by uh, keeping away from them uh, as, they, as, as they do it, that they uh, place the bag there uh, 20 feet away and the person comes and picks up and uh, takes it away. Uh, 
Uh, we have been mixing with the crowds, mixing with the poor people whom uh, we helped, and none of us got infected. Uh, as far as uh, the, um, the, I'm concerned, the, I'm more than 68 years. Uh, they say that uh, the, uh, naturally the, the older people have uh, the, the the weaker uh, uh, the, the, <coughs> the, the resistance to the disease. So. I've been going to the people who are who had COVID, who are, who are COVID positive. I've been sitting beside them, and I've been I went to meet them, I went to, went to console them. They were fearful of me coming to them. They were scolding me, but then I said, I don't fear. I mean, I don't fear. Just as Macharya Ji was saying that there is a fear of death. So then I don't fear of dying. So I went to them. I I didn't get that infection, and uh, the, 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 a lot of others and hundreds of uh, our volunteers who were mixed with the crowds and they they went there and helped them. They didn't get it. I'll narrate only one incident to you. Uh, that one of my work, workers he was in, infected somehow, and they told uh, and his oxygen level was uh, decreasing, uh, very decreasing very fast. So where we live in Rampur, it, it's in uh, it's a, a small town. Uh, and uh, there are no uh, uh, modern facilities in uh, the, uh, in the hospitals as there are in other cities, other bigger cities. So when he got there, when he got the when got infected, and they said that you had have the COVID, and his oxygen level was below 60. Uh, it, it was going to the doctor said to him uh, said to him to uh, advise him to rush to Muradabad. Uh, Muradabad is nearby. It's only 25 or 30, and the hospital was uh, 30 kilo. Hospital in Muradabad was only 30 kilometers away from his uh, his home. So then he remembered that I'd advised the I mean, not as simple things as uh, Macharya has said, but then I I'd advised and I've been using it. Uh, my workers, I mean, uh, needless to say, uh, that where I got the formula. But then uh, it, during the days of pandemic. Uh, to uh, the, uh, sustain our immunity, I've been using uh, olive and uh, fig. So, uh, and I've uh, told it to everyone, and all our workers had been using it, and they were all safe. Then, then he remembered he was he wasn't using it. Then he remembered when when he was being taken to the hospital. Uh, he he told me that. Uh, 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 he asked his family members to uh, immediately give them some olives. The figs were not there, and uh, uh, the, the, in those uh, during those 30 kilometers, uh, he started uh, the eating olives. I mean, he took uh, about 10 or 12 olives uh, on the way, and when when he reached there, the first thing which was done to him was uh, measuring his uh, oxygen level. Uh, and the oxygen level was more than 90. Uh, it's, it's in the in this uh, 45 minutes, they reached there in 45 minutes, and during this 45 minutes, his oxygen level became 45 minutes. So uh, he came back, uh, and he got well uh, very soon. So th that was the one, the one experience I wanted to share. Uh, oh, as uh, you were saying, as the uh, Bacharya Sarav Sarkar was saying, that. Uh, the, uh, the pandemic or disease, uh, if if at all it is, uh, the, it is a pandemic. Uh, then the, it affects the respiratory system. Everyone knows. And then you wear the mask and you limit the oxygen. You you limit your oxygen level by forty percent. At least you decrease it by forty percent by wearing that mask. Uh, you inhale only sixty percent of the oxygen. Uh, the only the best. Uh, 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 immunity, uh, the the helper of the immunity available in the atmosphere is oxygen, uh, the which kills your bacteria, which kills your viruses, and you coach everyone to uh, decrease your oxygen level. Uh, everyone who is healthy, so you are diminishing the decreasing the immunity in everyone. Yes. So, uh, so that is not uh, the way to do it. Obviously, not only consider it, but I'll change this culture about. Uh, uh, the medical camps and uh, putting more stress. People need medicines when yes. they are uh, sick, so the the medicine should be there. Uh, but then this section of uh, 
advising people and educated people uh, educating people uh, right. should always uh, and the naturopaths they uh, they must all uh, also be there to educate all the patients who are coming there to go to our natural ways of uh, increasing our immunity like mr sarav sarkar acharya sarav sarkar said so uh, he gave me a, a very good thing very good uh, a tip about uh, uh, using a shank and i, I, I haven't <laughs> uh, purchased it yet uh, i intend to and then the second thing kamandal very simple thing which i'll get here too uh, yes. uh, and the, the, the shank is really i mean if you if you people were saying when the pandemic started is that if you can breathe for so long or hold your breath for so long that's the immediate test whether you are okay or not so we've been doing this every day you know i blow the shank so i when i'm so my test is happening every day so these are things that and this is this is just a uh, breath work it is not just blowing the shank this is not essentially a religious or a cultural thing it is a breath work it is a health related thing i'll mention just yeah. two things here one is the word health itself if you see it comes from the word heal so we always say health ka matlab power to heal you know very very important health is not not running away from health problems it is not running away from disease this is the fundamental problem which people think i mean i think the basic agyanata that is there people think that you can run away from disease no every day you are being attacked by hundreds of virus bacteria this that whatever problems are happening so health ka matlab power to heal if you see the guy who's who's in the boxing ring or in the ufc ring who's fighting he is able to take 300 blows and he's back again immediately so he has healed himself from the blow if the if the boxer hits me a blow i will be down for you know 3 months so i don't have as much health as the guy who's fighting in that ring because he has the power to heal that's why he has better health so i think that needs to be understood health is the the indicator of health is how quickly you can heal yourself <laughs> from the problems that happen to you so that you can take on problems and not run away from problems if you translate health then we say health ka matlab power to heal health ke liye khao healthy meal so you know to all uh, dr bishru chakravarti is saying his the whole thing focus on diet uh, you know power to heal comes this power to heal comes from what it comes from diet health 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 ka matlab power to heal health ke liye khao healthy meal healthy life mein bahe pasina healthy life ka naam hai jeena this is the four simple lines we use you know healthy life mein bahe pasina means you have to work exercise you have to go out not just lock yourself down and healthy life ka matlab hai jeena it's not dying you know marna ka marne ka matlab health nahi hai so that is one if you translate health to swas to the more our our languages you see it is swa and aastha so it is something that allows you to have aastha on your own self faith on your own self swa aastha swast something so if you don't have faith on your own self how can you have you have swast so the whole thing about health is instilling aastha in your own self and how do you do that i mean other than uh, bringing in all the issues of you know religion and spirituality and all of that together with which is there in the quran or the bible or the uh, gita whatever you want to call it the essence of that has to be brought in for health also so because the topic was not that of communal thing so i just wanted to at least make sure that we touch yes. that you talked yes. about culture you talked about culture making it a culture and we we, uh, we have been trying just that uh, and probably the, we now we are getting success we have been doing for years we don't want to do it off and on and we don't want want to do it uh, some uh, 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 some measures on some particular dates only uh, it should be a culture it should be i mean compassion should be a culture and uh, it it is now becoming our culture the uh, among our uh, because they do it uh, i see them they uh, do it with their emotions when they they do it uh, uh, not not only because uh, uh, i have said uh, i have asked them to do it but they when they they feel satisfaction they they have now inspirations to go to people and do something for them 
uh, and this uh, this has uh, certainly uh, showing in them that they, it is becoming a, a culture uh, in our uh, workers in our organization and uh, this thing uh, uh, is a, a very infectious thing when when we give, go out to people and we meet them they they are uh, if, if you uh, uh, if, if you are telling them something uh, something by wearing a, wearing only a mask and you are something else inside and you are something else outside uh, they, they it won't affect them uh, when you are sincere and they feel the thing in you then they they also get the message and uh, they 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 are impressed so that's what we are doing and we'll continue doing it uh, but the uh, uh, most important, very important aspect of this pandemic, uh, our dangerous aspect of this pan pand pandemic had been uh, the uh, uh, breaking of relationships, breaking of re community relationships, breaking of uh, uh, interfaith uh, harmony. I mean, uh, as if, uh, uh, I mean, it, it wasn't perfect earlier too, but then uh, those uh, uh, who used it uh, to uh, um, the, the, uh, to promote their, uh, their personal aims, uh, they, they invented a new thing, uh, Corona, uh, Corona Jihad. When they, they, uh, after every few months, we uh, uh, come across a new type of jihad. So the the uh, Corona Jihad was propagated, and then the the uh, poor uh, vegetable vendors and uh, Muslim vegetable vendors and fruit vendors. They were beaten at many places. They had come to, they, they had gone to them uh, to spread the corona. When they, they were not dying. They were selling the vegetables and they will spread the corona there. So, the, the, the uh, and the, the, the uh, tragic thing is, the dangerous thing is that the government knows who, who are the persons who are doing it, who are spreading it. They know it, but they didn't stop it. Uh, they, the, the the fake news fact. They, it was a it was like a fake news industry, right. and then uh, the, the some well-meaning press people or journalists they came out with the uh, the the counters. They came out with fact checks. The fact checks, those fact checks. That's all those every single news uh, which was spread in the name of uh, the minorities. Every every sing, single news came came out to be false, but those fact checks didn't reach reach the people, the, the, uh, and those misunderstandings are still being circulated. So uh, we have to fight those also. We, we we have to counter and fight that tendency also, breaking the community relationship. So we go to the people for, for them, even if we, we don't go with some some uh, uh, something to give them some packets of food or anything we go, we just go there we talk to them we talk about uh, the things which are uh, men which create harmony in our own way and it affects uh, uh, it reaches uh, them at, uh, in the very first meeting when we go there and then there are follow-ups so in that way we are also doing it so, uh, so uh, let's hope uh, uh, the other people of the, uh, um, I, uh, I don't uh, say when we, we we take pictures, we take uh, videos only because we only because uh, the other people could be uh, inspired by it, inspired. and we can reach out to people to to say that this is the work you should uh, do under your banners, any banner. It's not necessary that you join work, but, but there should be coordination, whatever. Uh, and the coordination is the main thing people uh, uh, from sitting in, by sitting in your homes so that's what we are doing and we want uh, others uh, uh, like my other like minded uh, organizations also to come together and uh, do it uh, jointly and uh, the benefit from each other's experience uh, and share it with people uh, the, take it to the people so uh, let's hope uh, we succeed and the next step of course yeah, this is the immediate response uh, uh, and what we, we have been doing earlier too and we have we, we have uh, increased our efforts but then 
the real thing which we have, will have to do is uh, to take uh, what Macharya ji said that there was fear, to take fear out of the people and to mobilize people, mobilize people to, uh, to rise and to uh, wipe out all these things, this corrupt, uh, to finish those corrupt, corrupt systems, to tell them that good times can come only when you join it. Only when people, no organization can do it. No Mahacharya can do it. No Lama can do it. And no Earth Connect uh, founder can do it. We have to make it a movement. Right, sir. So, you know, how can, uh, how can uh, you know, people uh, get in touch with uh, work across this country? Is uh, a website or something, if Kirti can give us, or some links, then, you know, uh, uh, yeah, people can easily connect with work in their different cities in the different states and make you know your movement uh, much bigger. Simple. We go go uh, to the people. We uh, we involve. We've been involved in uh, certain activities. We take photos and we take videos, and then when right. we circulate or we promote it, uh, uh, we insert a, a number there, a, a WhatsApp number there. Okay. If if you like it, if they like it, uh, we don't say that. If you like it join us or right. contact us. Okay. Besides that, number on the but, videos. But those who like it, they want to know about anything, about us and uh, about those activities. If right. they want to know anything, they call us. They call us and then uh, certainly, I mean, uh, all of them do, do not become uh, our volunteers or our members. But right. then they they do like it and they do agree and they start doing something in, in their own capacity. And that's right. enough for us. It's not that's necessary right. that they join us. Correct, correct. Kirti ji has also in the chat box given uh, the number to connect. So I request everybody in the audience to take down that number and that's how you can connect with work. And uh, before Acharya ji leaves, because uh, he had to uh, be at another uh, event also, I would just like to mention one thing. Yes, and the philosophy behind it is that the fear will also come down when we give some people, you know, certain simple solutions. Uh, so one of the biggest fears now is for those who have got the symptoms, you know, their uh, oxygen level going down on the oximeter. So uh, very simple technique I will show you now. And I'm, uh, I just realized it is uh, very connected to the shunk that sir was uh, showing. Okay, so uh, even, uh, see, I had uh, COVID symptoms for one week in May. Uh, here in Goa and uh, I treated it just uh, being at home with very natural uh, therapies and you know more of rest electrolytes green smoothie and just a couple of you know vitamin C and zinc and all of that so it was more kind of just rest at home and heal yourself so this everybody can do and that's what I put out on a blog also of mine later and uh, I tried those prone ventilations and all because my oxygen also had gone down at one point the lowest was 88 but generally it had gone down to 92 and uh, it was quite some work to do this prone ventilation be here put the pillow here go down but then i found an amazing technique which i'm just showing now for the benefit of your know, people here and who will watch the video later simple thing just take an in breath whether from your nose or your mouth at any pace but when you blow out you can imagine you're blowing into a balloon like when we were having the party, we are trying to blow into a balloon that's a little bit tough, right? So it's just take your in-breath and your mouth, it kind of gets, uh, you know, a little pressurized and you're sitting and if it's better if you sit upright. So maybe then I can show something on the ox oximeter right now if my oxygen is somewhere at 97 or something or 98. Uh, just yesterday evening, a patient of mine in Goa called and I made them do this breath. In one breath, each breath, it was at 88. One breath, it went to 89. Second breath, it went to 90. Third breath, it went to 91. Fourth breath, it went to 92. So just in five breaths, it will go up. And this is, so that's a similar thing that's been done with the shunk. You see, there's a pressure that you blow into. So what happens when your mouth is pressurized like this? Actually, there's a back pressure that goes into your lungs and the lungs get expanded. So at that very second itself, there's more absorption of oxygen and you can see it on the meter. Now, let's see. Uh, generally, my thing will be at uh, 98 or something. If it's at 97, then probably you'll get to see it go up now. Okay, it's at 90. 
uh, eight, I think, over here. Yes. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it's inverted, but I think you can see it. You see 99. Yeah. Right? So you, already had the, yeah you already had the maximum level. But so I have also tried it. I, yeah, I, so I have tried I it in 98. Uh, and it's more difficult okay, to get it from yeah. 98 to 99. Okay. So it took yeah. me three three breaths to get from 98 to 99. But if you are at like 88 and all that, it just takes one one breath. So this is also something that you can you know teach all the people when you all go to the health camps very simple and uh, so for those and so what i want to say it, it is we uh, it is just biological sciences so if there is a hindu who likes to uh, uh, you know play a uh, shank that's fine you know some catholics may not want to uh, it's a symbol of that or some muslim may think it's not a symbol. but the thing is that these are uh, these are sciences and it is much better and uh, eco friendly then to buy a balloon and do it and better than you that, that you take a shank and do it and you have a very beautiful sound and you have something natural in your home that also looks beautiful i yeah, uh, the, i'll tell them uh, when i'll I, uh, it was discussed here that you also explained it that it is not a religious thing it is a cultural thing but then uh, because uh, uh, there are more number of uh, muslims in work than belonging to uh, uh, other religions uh, for different reasons for uh, probably uh, i mean there are reasons that when it, they, i feel that when uh, a muslim is heading an organization the culture has become that uh, hindus uh, less number lesser number of hindus would join it uh, it's unfortunate but then uh, i have a large number of muslim following and i want to tell them through this forum through this webinar and through i'll tell them to through other uh, uh, means too and other forums too uh, that uh, the when it, it is not uh, uh, islam doesn't ask you to change your culture when you are living somewhere i mean it doesn't ask you to what muslims have done is uh, and it it is a, uh, it, it is not a good thing which they have, they have done it islam doesn't ask them to do it to change your culture wherever you adopt the culture of that place you remain on the culture of the, that place where you are living you, you start uh, uh, the, the naming your uh, your uh, start naming your children on uh, in, in in arabic or persian or some other languages for foreign languages why why don't you the name your children uh, i mean the, why why can't you give uh, names of your children in hindi uh, the local language so the, don't don't change the culture and, and islam doesn't ask you uh, about it so if it's it, it's a cultural thing number one uh the shank and uh, the uh, the commandal uh, too and the other things too but even if it's religious uh, the, it says a, a very famous uh, uh, hadith of prophet muhammad uh, that uh, 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 that adopt anything which is good anywhere and uh, that, uh, consider it your own uh, adopt it and consider it that uh, as if it was it was your own uh, so uh, uh, that that was uh, that is the advice of prophet muhammad you have you don't have to take only those things according to islam you don't have to take only those things which islam prohibits and the prohibitions the list of prohibitions is uh, is not very long it's a very short list the list of prohibitions everything else is permitted so it is uh, uh, a wrong perception being given by the muslim religious leadership that this color of clothes this is when the colors all belong to the creator this color belongs to the muslims this color belongs to hindus so this is all rubbish uh, if anything benefits you and benefits you by experience uh, you must use it and you must adopt it so uh, the, i'll tell my workers and my followers 
that uh, I'm certainly going to uh, 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 to have a shank and so certainly going to purchase the commander too. Yeah, I mean, in that there is, we have uh, as part of the Karmio for 21st century entire this movement, as we call it, where there is, we run a program called the Fit for Life program, which has all of these elements built into it. There is a whole breath work is a very big component. We always say tan pran man chit. So it's physical, pranic as in energetic, mental and spiritual, all four dimensions, exercising all these four dimensions, both individually as well as collectively. You know, individually, singularly as one, and in Sangha as group. Now, all of these, we have designed it by pulling in so many things from all religions, including a whole lot from Islam. Uh, because just the the, uh, the phenomenal amount of uh, importance given to daily practice, if not anything else, just that in Islam is so important. And is really, if you ask me what has been the one single uh, factor which is which has contributed to the success of, of Islam as a religion, you know, Islam as in, I mean, success, you may say that it has not succeeded in the way it was supposed to, but still the fact it has actually spread. So if you just take success from the, from the point of view of how much it has spread so quickly, there is no other religion which has spread so far and wide and is spreading so far so quickly. One of the primary people may ascribe so many different reasons like, you know, no paying, no, not paying heat to population, all, all that. But those are negativistic thinking. The real thing, if you look at the importance that it gives to daily practice, you know, no other religion gives that kind of focus, you know, as to, to everyone. You know, someone who's part of a monastery or someone, it's a different thing. But just as in general life, the daily practice, of, I mean, five times a day you have to do this, whatever. It's a, it may, may not be a one-hour routine, but the fact that you are doing it, or what you are doing, the act itself is, as I said, tan pran manchit. You are doing something with your body. You are doing something by, by virtue of what you are doing. I'm, I'm referring to the namaz that, you know, five times a day that you have to do is actually a tan pran manchit exercise. Now, if I say that, oh, that is... You know, Islamic ex Muslim no karte, Hindu karte, karta chahiye, hamare te toh kitna kuch yoga hai ye. No, it is all, I, I, you know, really it's this, the, we have to exercise the body. The, we cannot say that this form of breathing is Muslim breathing, this is Hindu breathing, and this apparatus is a, uh, this is exactly what. what anything the, which is, the, yeah, anything which is beneficial must be a part of religion. It is, has been a part of religion. Uh, even if you have lost it and yeah. anything which is harmful to the humanity you must discard it it has yeah. it, it wasn't in the original religion it has been inserted at some uh, point of time inserted to uh, uh, harm the others so harming anyone is not religion so the, right. that is the simple thing with, uh, and we are doing it we, we go out to the people and uh, we work for communal harmony in that way also there by meeting people and we work for communal harmony by associating with uh, different persons of uh, of eminence uh, of different religious scholars and conducting and participating in interfaith dialogue. Yes, thank the you. Most, as, you, as you say that, Alama Sahib, there is a very important reference I would point to. There's a two-part book written by Kushwan Singh on Sikhism. No, and and uh, this he actually charts the entire from beginning till now, uh, how, and it's actually the youngest religion which has kind of happened in front of our eyes. And if you see exactly to the point that you were mentioning, all those things that were prohibited, all of those things have now come in rampantly within that. And he actually says at the end that these two, these 500 years shows the birth and almost the end of the religion. And then, I mean, it's it's also so coincidental because there was this whole notion of, of Raj Karega Khalsa was the kind of thing with which it was a kind of motto to the whole thing. So there was, it was one religion which had this uh, whole Satta thing built into it. You know, the, the Rajnitic thing or the political thing actually built into it because Raj Karega Khalsa, although Raj Karega Khalsa did not actually happen, but when... Manmohan Singh, who was a Sikh, was the Prime Minister, 
he kind of says that is kind of the time by when all those things which were religiously prohibited and he the reason is not manmohan singh obviously but by that time it had so happened coincidentally that most of the things that were prohibited had seeped in into the religion you know the punjab had become the place where drug addiction was highest you know in a in a religion which was so prohibit i mean which so prohibits smoking also uh, so you know to your point about, about prohibiting discarding those things that are harmful and religion has to play a part in in doing that uh, and not fighting against all those things which are beneficial just because it is kind of somehow has a connection with some other religion and the khalsa must rule but yeah. they, but when they lost the khalsa what khalsa is <laughs> they must understand what khalsa is that yeah. the khalis the pure yeah <laughs> and that, that that i mean in, in if you really get there then that is the only thing that rules and no other i mean nothing else can do. that is yeah. where you know, at the level that we are all kind of equal and the same yeah, that's uh, very true because uh, uh, you know i have also been with the spiritual movement since 2011 when i was first invited on you know the global platform the world united to speak at the first world parliament on spirituality in 2012 and that's where the delegations i met of the interfaith religions and all of that um, so i saw that that was you know quite a tough job for uh, uh, different religions to agree on everything there were certain tenets you know 10 15 20 tenets that they could commonly agree on but they would stick with certain things that you know that they would not change so the kind of uh, uh, thing was okay let us uh, agree and uh, go forward with the common things so because it was a tough job then uh, that's when my uh, kind of uh, work changed more into science and i said no let us uh, teach people living sciences healthcare sciences sciences of consciousness uh, because those every human being can operate if you teach it in a way right in a way that's uh, understandable to the common man so uh, let's teach all the living sciences to people because that they will agree on uh, let's pick up all the problems that they have and this is how the earth keepers movement actually started because i said health is a problem air is a problem soil is a problem you know then uh, so many other uh, things that are there i said 90% of them are uh, common to everybody and there are sciences uh, normal sciences that you have to teach so i went ahead with this movement so people are united on that you see so i think at some point in time you know uh, even uh, the spiritual gurus and teachers uh, figure out that uh, some people are not scientific and they do not want to do the right thing so let's put that science in the religion because they are religious so some things came into religion because of that especially you know the indian vedic sciences uh, everything even uh, playing the shank is part of a health practice so So I think yes. Uh, there's a. Uh, I'll just come to the questions now because uh, yeah, we have just. Uh, I have delayed the questions. I just have a couple of them though. There have been about 15 comments which are just uh, not questions. But on this communal uh, note, I just want. Uh, uh, there was a question from Nita Dung. She says that uh, the religion, the religion card or the communal card is played in our day-to-day -day work. and on other occasions of which we are all aware of so don't you think that communal harmony on a mass scale still seems to be far a far possibility and a very mammoth task so uh, lama ji could you please uh, uh, comment on that you know how uh, difficult the task is uh, what do you think of course you all are doing a lot of work in and same in, in the domain of uh, helping people uh teaching people and giving them aid so you are doing that across all communities but would you like to comment on the bigger you know uh communal certain uh, aspects of divide uh, can there be in a country like india can there be a, you know actual complete communal harmony or that is like she's saying a far uh, dream the question was uh, that uh, it's a very huge problem can it be controlled can it be tackled and can we the do something can really do something about it so when you ask such type of questions you believe that it can be done and sit you just sit in your home we have been working in the field 
and then and we have seen and we and we we have observed that it is the simplest thing it is the easiest thing to uh, uh, when we uh, communicate with someone when he uh, and if we are sincere uh, if we we are not wearing a mask and we we are we are not talking something and believing in something else uh, so it is the simplest thing to convince people and to tell people that it is wrong and they do agree and they do agree sincerely they they really uh, they really are impressed and they really uh, believe in it for, for, for what we tell them they, when we go to them so it is very easy very simple but then uh, oh, when the, the people they, they you need uh, to come out uh, come out of your home uh, uh, spare some time some time out of your uh, the busy routine or uh, the, the routine which is routine of your earning money uh, you you have to take some time out of it uh, that that's what the workers do and that's the uh, for, for that we inspire them and we ask them to do the, the, it is a dan I mean, give uh, your time your time is also a dan uh, it's a charity so give some time uh, uh, spare some time out of your uh, other duties and uh, say that time should be uh, spent for constructive things for the humanity and they do it uh, they, people do it so pe right. people come, should come out come out of their houses come out there come out of their uh, earning uh, the factories and then spare some time when these people will grow uh, uh, that uh, all not only communal disturbances or communal disharmony but the other evils will also vanish yes uh, lama ji what i'm getting from you is uh, you know uh, conclusion is very uh, simple uh, is that uh, at a philosophical level there may be always a difference but on the field when people come shoulder to shoulder and actually work with each other then all that difference uh, can be wiped out and that's the real way forward uh, mahacharya ji what would you like to share on this well two two things one is we, we must understand that if if we have to succeed then us in india are are the only ones in this whole world who can succeed in this why because this we have this history of that of diversity out of the 57 islamic countries where islam went this is the one country which has survived 800 years of rule without the country being converted into uh, i mean into a islamic country we must pay attention to that and, and realize why that happened and not just that 200 years of British rule. And still, you know, we are all very comfortable with this diversity. Why did that happen? Because there is a fundamental fabric of communal harmony. Communal, you go to the, we think communal harmony in terms of just uh, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Sikh, Buddhist, this, that. Go to a time period before that. This was a country where so many different faiths, so many things were, I mean, everyone was uh, practicing some different lifestyle, some different deity, and so many different things were going on. And all of that was going on. There was obviously, there was fight, there were wars, there was everything. There was breaking of temples and there was breaking of Kul Devatas. People talk about this uh, temple, mosque issues and all that. Before, the, uh, before Islam came in, was there not wars in India? Obviously, there were power wars that had happened. When the wars happened, one king would go and rule another, you know, uh, conquer another king. And then the first thing they would do was, was establish their own Kul Devata, break the, remove the Kul Devata of the previous one and establish theirs. So it's nothing to do with communal harmony and power struggle are two different things. So we have been a country which has this long history of phenomenal communal harmony and we have survived it. So we, whereas the rest of the world, if you look at, is, is struggling with it. Europe is struggling with it. America has started struggling with it. I mean, the so-called developed nations have started struggling with all this problem because they have never really faced this problem. So I would say that we are very uniquely poised to actually show the world the way. And if we have to be, as, uh, as we say, you know, Vishwaguru, the only way to be Vishwaguru is not by writing software. I mean, I come from a technology background, but I'm still saying that it is not, not that is not our route to, route to being a Vishwaguru. 
our route to being a Vishnu Guru, as Alam Adhvi also says, is when Satya Yuga Aiga. But I would really say, is by showing the way how we can be one, because that's really our core, our essence. And that, that is the first point. So to, to uh, the, the person who asked the question to the point that whether this is elusive or not, I don't think this is elusive. This is the only route by which we as a nation can shine in this, in this planet. If, and, and there's an opportunity. And this is the time has come to make, take, make the most of that opportunity. If you look at the, you know, any country, no matter which, whether it's an Islamic country or whether it's a Christian country or whatever, or a democratic country, which allows all of this, all of them are struggling. And it is our moment of opportunity to show them the way. So the time has come to, to really show them the way. I do not believe that it's elusive for us. We have a long history. The second point is that if we really understand where it all comes together, and that is, that, that is where we, have, we seem to have come a little far. The fact that, uh, you know, I, I always give the example of the blank page. If you look at the Bible or the Quran or the Gita, the problem is that we fail to see the page on which it is written. The blankness of the page on which the words are written. That is where it is all same. And I'm giving this as a metaphor, but that is which to which all the prophets were pointing to and all the prophets were trying to take us there. And that is where we are not being able to go. And hence the religious programming, all this communal harmony can only come if we focus on, on, on getting to that point, which is the blankness behind the words of the Gita, the blankness behind the words of the Bible or the Quran and, and discover the blank page, the, the basic essence of what we are all. It's, I keep saying that it's it's metaphorical to say that Hindu, Muslim, Christian, sabka khun ek hai, lahu ek hai, but lahu to mere ek nahi hai. My own lahu is different. If I measure it, 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 the composition today, will change and become a different composition tomorrow. So that is the part that has not been understood. Where are we one? So at a consciousness level, at a pure consciousness level, and that's a topic for another day, but that is where, but it's easy to understand. It's easy, it's not difficult, it's not esoteric. You don't have to spend time, 20 years or 20 lifetimes in a monastery in order to understand where it is all the same. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Mahacharya ji. And uh, so since our time is up, uh, we will have to conclude and uh, I have heartfelt gratitude to both you and Lama Ji and thanks to our audience also for hanging in there in the webinar. Uh, we had a wonderful session and uh, we look forward uh, to seeing you all again tomorrow at the same time on the same link uh, for our day eight uh, topic, which is a decentralized integrative natural medicine system for wellness. So I say, uh, Warm namaste and thank you to everyone and have a good evening.